Hi there. My name's Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech, and today I would like to talk about a particular kind of circuit that appears in some guitar effects pedals. What's something that the Digitech Bad Monkey, the Boss Heavy Metal, the DoD Grunge, and the Boss Metal Zone pedals have in common? They all contain gyrators. In particular, they try to simulate inductors using capacitors. Although you'll sometimes find inductors used in audio circuits like some wah pedal designs, designers of audio circuits typically avoid inductors because the amount of inductance you need to be useful at audio frequencies results in inductors that are bulky and kind of obnoxious to deal with. Okay, so what we would like to do is simulate an inductance going to ground. Now, in practice, what we're actually going to wind up simulating is an inductance in series with the resistance going to ground. So, imagine that we're looking in this direction. Well, really, we're looking in this direction, and we want to find something that has an equivalent impedance. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take our input here, and we're going to split it into two paths. One of the path is going through an RC high pass filter. Let's say I'm going to call this R, I'm going to call this C, and this goes to ground. Now, in an actual guitar pedal, this is probably something like a 4.5 volt reference, but here let's assume that we're doing everything with a bipolar supply, so I can just use a ground symbol. I'm then going to buffer this, so here I'm going to just use an op amp where we put the input to the positive terminal and then we strap the negative terminal to the output. I'll assume that this op amp is ideal and we take the output of this and feed it back this direction through a resistance RL. If I want to figure out what the equivalent impedance seen looking in this direction is, I basically have two sub impedances in parallel. I have one here that's just going to be the impedance of this capacitor in series with this resistance. And that's going to be in parallel with this impedance seen looking in this direction here. But this is going to be more complicated because I have this feedback loop. How about I'll call this impedance Z1 and I'll call this impedance Z2. So to figure out Z1, Let's imagine that we put a test voltage source here, and then I'll look at the resulting current induced by that voltage source, and we'll call that current I test. And then once we compute I test, we can divide these quantities to get Z1. All right, so I test is going to be equal to V test here, minus the output of the op amp here, which is V minus if V minus was the negative input of the op amp, but that's the same as V plus here. So let's say V test minus V plus, and this is all over RL by Ohm's law. So it's the difference of the voltages across the resistor RL divided by RL. So here I'm indicating that whatever the V plus is, at the positive terminal of the op amp, you get the same V plus output. Okay, so what's V plus? Well, V plus is just our V test seen through this high pass filter. So let's see, I'll have a voltage divider with R on top, and then I'll have R plus the impedance of this capacitor, which is one over CS. And let's see, let me rewrite this by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by S and dividing the numerator and the denominator by R. So I'll have S over S plus one over RC. So this is a canonical high pass filter with a cutoff frequency of one over RC in radians per second. Okay, so let me plug this V plus expression into V plus here, let's see, I'll be able to factor out V test from both terms, and then I'll have one minus this S over S plus one over RC, 
and this is all over RL. And let's see, I could rewrite this as vtest over RL. And in the numerator here, let's see, I could rewrite this as s plus 1 over rc over s plus 1 over rc. So that's a overly complicated way of writing 1. And then I subtract this s over s plus 1 over rc. And let's see, the s's will then cancel. Aha. Okay, so we can say v test all over RL, and we have 1 over RC all over S plus 1 over RC. Aha, so that now has the form of a canonical low pass filter. All right, just because it's convenient later, let me rewrite this as v test with, let's see, I'll write 1 over RCS plus 1. So we'll put it in this kind of time constant style form. Oh wait, I need to remember there's an RL down here. Actually, let me do this. Let me go ahead and multiply that RL through. This is just in anticipation of something that's coming later. So let me put an RL here, and I'll put an RL here. Okay, finally, we have Z1 is going to equal the test voltage V test divided by the resulting current I test. When we plug this expression in for I test, the V tests are going to cancel. I test is in the denominator, so we wind up with RL, RCS plus RL. Okay, the actual impedance is going to be this Z1 in parallel with Z2. So let's see, I'll have Z1, which is RL, RCS plus RL, in parallel with the impedance seen looking down this direction. So that's going to be 1 over SC plus R. So if we can ignore this second term, and I'll talk about that in a second, and equate this RLRC with L, we see that this expression forms an inductance of L, with L being RLRC, in series with a resistance R sub L. Again, that assumes that you could ignore this term here in the parallel combination. And in order to do that, Wikipedia says that R needs to be big enough. So this aspect of this term here is often ignored in discussions about gyrators. They assume the impedance is just this here. If you wanted to do a really detailed model, you would have to include this term here. Now I should mention that you won't always see an op amp here. Sometimes what the designer will do, probably to save cost, is they'll use just a BJT. They'll take what was the input to the op amp circuit, attach that to the base, and then let's see, usually you would see an NPN transistor here. And this would be some resistor that you would place here in order to make this work as a voltage follower. So this is a common collector BJT amp. So this would go to your 9 volts or whatever your positive supply is. Then you would take the output from the emitter and wrap that around like that. So the gain here isn't exactly equal to 1, but it's going to be close enough. Another thing to note is that there's going to be a DC voltage drop across the base emitter junction, something like 0 0.6, 0 0.65, or 0 0.7 volts. But the way this is usually used is that this inductor resistor network here is actually put in series with a capacitor. So essentially that DC drop winds up being irrelevant from a small signal standpoint because it winds up being blocked by these capacitors anyway. If you would like to know more about emitter followers, you can check out my lecture on the topic in my ECE 3400 analog electronic series. So let's look at some applications. Here's the metal zone schematic, and we see that there's a filter before the main nonlinearity and that there's a filter after it. 
The filter that comes before it uses one gyrator, and the filter that comes after it uses two gyrators, and these are gyrators of the BJT type. Notice that these filters have fixed frequency-dependent characteristics. There's some other circuitry in this pedal that gives the musician some tone control. The Boss Heavy Metal pedal has this weird tone control section called the Color Mix, and there's a couple of knobs for that. One of the knobs deals with one gyrator, another knob deals with two gyrators, and these are all hooked into a single op amp that forms this big filter. Okay, so let's take a look at the DoD grunge pedal. I see one gyrator based filter with a single gyrator that comes before the nonlinearity, and I see two frequency dependent stages coming after the nonlinearity. The first one has two gyrators and it has fixed frequency characteristics. The second one has one gyrator and it has a couple of knobs to give the musician some control. What's interesting is that I see that three of the gyrators use BJTs, whereas one of them uses an op amp. And here's the schematic that's floating around for the Bad Monkey. You'll see that it's basically a tube screamer. We have a non-inverting op-amp configuration with clipping diodes in the feedback loop, followed by a tone stage here that has a pot hooked to a gyrator. One thing to be careful about is that there's at least one error on the schematic. The emitter and the collector here are swapped. The emitter should be going this direction, and the collector should be hooked to V+. Oh, and there is another tone control here, but it doesn't involve a gyrator. It just has a capacitor and a resistor here, whereas the one with the gyrator would effectively have the same thing, but also have an inductor in series with these elements. Now, one thing I haven't talked about yet is how this equivalent inductance, well, inductance in series with the resistance, combines with the other elements here to give you a particular frequency response, in particular as you vary the pot, but we'll talk about that another time.